Good morning everyone, this is CM Kozeman again. Now today we're gonna do something fun. We're gonna do a paleo profile on what is probably one of the most embarrassing mystery Cambrian fossils there is. The strangely shaped squishy creature Herpetogaster. But before beginning, please consider subscribing to my channel liking and commenting on this video and also please uh, consider donating to me on patreon as you may or may not know uh, my father and i just suffered a disastrous office fire many of the things were insured but i lost a lot of my paintings and you know faced with such a disaster a little contribution always helps also i mean Consider yourself donating uh, to keep the service going. I mean, only a do even a dollar per month really makes a big difference for me. So there. Now, before introducing this amazing fossil creature, I will actually propose you to imagine this amazing anime series, okay? It's called Prehistoric Aquarium or Aquarium Prehistoric Ku or something like that. And... You know, I am in the starring role, as always, as a kind of anime Gando Ikari type of creep. But I am surrounded by these unnecessarily hot and beautiful women, you know. There's this kind of busty Mediterranean girls. And then there's this kind of half Melanesian, half Guyanese kind of silent girl with glasses. And then there's the icy but really kinky one who's like, Kösemeno san, I want to go to the ATM. I was like, all right, I guess after the working hours, I can show you the way around the bank. And it's like, who said anything about a bank? And I was like, Nani kore! And something like that. Anyways, in this anime series, me and these unnecessarily sexy girls work in a prehistoric aquarium shop where we kind of collect and try to raise and sell these interesting fossil sea creatures from millions of years ago in our world's past okay and i mean there's many gags and kind of i mean it's it's all very subtle you know all the characters are treated with dignity well but let's say when someone bends over to wash over an aquarium or something the camera doesn't look away let's just say leave it at that and perhaps the episode with Herpetogaster would be something like, Oh my God, Kösemino san, when I touch it, it goes squish, squish, like doki, doki, squish, squish. And it's like, oh, anyways. But anyways, I could get all of this through production, but the episode of Herpetogaster would be the one that would get the show cancelled. Not because of the raunchy jokes or the caustic uh, sexism, but simply because of the way this animal is reconstructed. I mean, in all contemporary reconstructions, if you look at her Potogaster, there is no way you cannot imagine a bizarre, uh, for the lack of a better world, a bizarre disembodied human penis with two fronds coming out of its top. And it's got this kind of wormy body, but like something comes out of the belly of the pee pee and anchors it into an like a larger growth or a coral or something you know so this is a very very mysterious fossil and this reconstruction is one of the most bizarre reconstructions i've ever seen in fact when i first saw it i thought it was like someone must be playing a, an april fool's joke or something but turns out the reconstruction is real well the fossil is also real but let's look a bit into what this animal actually is now the reconstructions you can see even you can see one on the video image they all resemble this bizarre phallus like shape but if you look at the actual fossils if you google actual fossils of herpetogaster they don't look like this at all i mean there's a kind of fat blobby worm like shape and from one end comes these tentacles. They, they assume they're feeding tentacles, but no one really knows. And then from towards the bottom part comes out this kind of proboscis-like thing. And the scientists studying this animal, they call it a stolon. It's a holdfast 
of varying lengths and angles. So something they reconstruct this thing as an anchor. But to me, it resembles uh, the proboscis of a giant uh, worm. I mean, there are worms like this around. They are called Nemeretians, and they have these enormous proboscises, sometimes as long as their body, sometimes even longer, that they fill with seawater, and they use it to basically engulf small prey. And so when I'm confronted with these reconstructions, the stolon, the, the hold fast always resembles a feeding proboscis instead of an anchoring foot. And the, the tentacles, which are normally assumed to be filter feeding tentacles, they actually resemble uh, gills or gas exchange devices of some sort. I mean, in the present day oceans, nudibranchs have them, you know, these sea slugs. They have these feathery things growing out of their backs and they they do look like feeding tentacles if you're like really really dumb about marine biology but actually they are used for gas exchange because the extended surface area presented by the fronts allows the creature to exchange oxygen from seawater so whenever i <coughs> of course i'm an armchair scientist i'm an armchair paleontologist i never saw one of these fossils but i looked a lot of, at a lot of photographs and you know, the reconstruction of all Cambrian animals, it's, a, it's an area where postmodernism is still okay in science. You know, the whole deal with the perception creating reality rather than vice versa. I think that happens a lot with reconstructions of these mystery fossils because, I mean, at, at, a, at a level, it's just... You cannot extract any more information from these fossils. They're just blobs on a stone. And if, it, of course, helps to have more blobs and, like, more specimens to study. But then you can't really put a precise name and function on all these organs and smudges and smears that you see, you know. It's an area where the, the, the finer you try to look, the more blurred the image becomes. And, and we had this thing happen before. I mean, one of the most famous Cambrian animals, Hallucigenia. It's a kind of like a worm with spikes, okay? <clears throat> oh, sorry. It's, I just woke up and I'm having the first coffee of my day. And mm -mm, I got the... Uh, I got the... A little, so you gotta bear with me. Anyways, we were talking about Hallucigenia. Okay, if you look at Hallucigenia, it's a kind of worm with a double row of spikes on its back, okay? And a double row of soft, squishy legs on the bottom. Now, when this fossil was first discovered, the double row of spikes were interpreted as the animal's actual feet. So it kind of walked on a series of chopsticks almost. And the legs, only a single row was discovered for some reason. And they assumed that the legs functioned as individual mouths, passing food down to a, a central digestive system. So it was like the most bizarre and outlandish reconstruction there was. Yet it was published as like a real, actual, studied scientific reconstruction, you know. So what I'm getting at is, with such mistakes uh, in hindsight, it's not completely extraordinary to consider that Herpetogaster could be interpreted upside down and backwards. What scientists interpret as its gas, ex as its food gathering instruments, the food tentacles, to me they appeared more like gills, and the stolon, the holdfast might probably be a hyper extensible proboscis that allows this animal to feed now let's look, let's look more into the time and places in which this bizarre animal was found i mean we know herpetogaster fossils from china in the Chengjiang formation from nevada in the pioche formation and from Canada in the famous Burgess Shale Formation. And it's a rather recent discovery. I mean, 
The, the first species, Herpetogaster colinsi, was described, I believe, in 2010 from a collection of 101 specimens. And then the Chinese specimen, Herpetogaster hyanensis, was discovered in 2020, so only last year. And from a, like four or six species specimens, I don't really recall. But, so we have a lot of fossils of these animals, but still something is like, if you look at their photographs, they look nothing like this bizarre, you know, hentai-like reconstruction, nothing at all. And one more interesting detail that these are always found in groups, so the scientists assume they were just maybe growing in a certain location together, or maybe they, they were just foraging in such a place. Also, they could be they could still be like relatively less mobile animals and still be reconstructed the wrong side up, I mean. And then most of them, they're like three centimeters long. So, you know, that's why Misato is laughing in this video image. And strangely, they have been associated sometimes with hyolith fossils. These are tiny mollusk-like fossils. These animals have two shells, one a pointed one and a round one, and two whisker-like things come out of the sides, another crazy Cambrian animal. So some have proposed that maybe Herpetogaster was eating the hyolids, or maybe they were just like hanging around in the same place. Again, we don't know, we just don't know. <coughs> oh my God. Still haven't woken up properly, but ah, that's a good feeling. I'm not sick, by the way. I just have the coarse throat, you know, from sleeping too much, I guess. Anyways, so what could these goddamn creatures actually be related to, you know? And uh, many paleontologists make half a career out of this, you know, figuring out the relationships of Ediacaran fossils or Cambrian fossils, all these mystery blobs and blotches on, on stone. But I think in that respect, I mean, it's a game of chance. I mean, these things could be anything. You have really clear fossils, but unless you have like miraculously a living specimen or some DNA or something, you can never, almost, almost never precisely see what they are related to. And scientists, scientists played this game a lot in the, in the past days. They would say that ah, this is this belongs to that phylum, or no, it's a brand new phylum, or it belongs to the arthropod phylum, or it's a silicate, but a, a clearly new order, whatever that meant. But in retrospect, in retrospect, these all seem a bit funny. Now, scientists, I think when we're classifying these trace fossils or these Cambrian or animals or the even lesser known Ediacaran fossils, I think we need to come up with an entirely new like semi-serious way to classify them. I mean, clearly there are species that are related to each other. Like you see all these fossils, like some look more like the others, but that's where we should stop. Like this group A, group B, soft-bodied forms, armored forms, trilobite-like forms. And when you group them together, you do see patterns emerging. But then to come up and link them with like, oh, were they the earliest, like, <clears throat> Believe it or not, I mean, Cambrian fossils, there was an incident in which a fossil, which in the past was reconstructed as something like half an arthropod head and half a almost vertebrate-like body, you know? So it was a bizarre thing. I mean, the front part had, had armor and mouth tentacles and like almost um, prone-like eyes, and the back part had kind of like a almost like an early fish like tail now someone up and went and said oh no actually this was a completely wrong reconstruction but we now know that this fossil which was called nectocaris was actually the earliest known cephalopod <laughs> go figure i mean <clears throat> god damn you earliest cephalopod i'm sorry my backside it's about as scientifically accurate and believable and testable and provable as that Aquarium Tropico anime I just described.
Heck, in, in fact, I think my anime is more, more fun. I mean, there are more fossils that indicate that these things kind of look maybe like little uh, cephalopods. If you'd never seen a cephalopod before, you know, if you had been maybe half blind in one eye and the other didn't see at all, maybe then they would kind of look at them. But you just don't know. They could be a trace fossil interpreted wrong. They could be things that kind of look like these cephalopods, whatever they are, but they just look like them. Maybe they were mollusks. I mean, yeah, cephalopods are mollusks, but maybe they were snails. Maybe they were early, early trilobites without shells. Who knows? Assigning these precise group names really looks ridiculous in my humble opinion but yes people have done that even for our lovely herpetogaster they as they assign them to a group of uh, cambro arnids that's c-a-m-b-r-o-e-r-n-i-d cambro arnids and this is an orphan clade they call it an orphan clade because it has no clear relatives living today in the past some people have linked them to earliest sea urchins or things like <coughs> sea cucumbers and loosely they group herpetogaster with several similar animals with like they've got a stalk like body and a swollen tulip like forebody with things coming out but these are very faint trace fossils and they for some reason they group them together with Aldonia, which is another mystery fossil. It looks like, okay, imagine the, a worm, the, the shape of a croissant. Okay, now turn the croissant into a full circle and really extend its sides so it looks like a croissant extended into a disc. But in the center of the croissant, there's this thing like a insides of a sea cucumber lying about. And it looks like it tried to emulate a jellyfish and somehow swam, but no one knows. And for some reason, Aldonia, they called it an early sea cucumber with kind of no idea except for that it kind of looked like one, but it didn't. An early sea cucumber that was flattened like uh, almost like a quasi jellyfish and swam about. And for convenience sake, someone grouped Herpetogaster with Aldonia and simil uh, some similar animals. But to this, I say, uh, you know, uh, with, mo with the greatest, utmost respect, bollocks. Why make an ass of yourself? Just group them among themselves. The group of animals that look like this. I mean, call them Calyxozoans or whatever. I mean, call, call them anything you want. But trying to connect them to these modern day groups just doesn't work. And in a, in a short episode, normally these episodes take like, I say it's gonna be a short episode and it takes an hour, right? But now it's a really short episode. In a short episode, this was our paleo profile of Herpetogaster. We know, we know them, what they kind of look like. We have their fossils, hundreds of them, yet in a, paradoxical way no one looks knows what they exactly look like no one exactly knows how they lived no one exactly knows what they ate heck no one exactly knows which side was up and i suggest everyone was wrong and the hold fast was actually a proboscis mouth i don't make these cl claims lightly you know i'm not this kind of renegade youtuber who says yeah you were wrong this was like that but in the cambrian in the case of cambrian fossils you can have that confidence so so there and it lived 540 to 515 million years ago so a really really old customer and this was basically our episode of prehistoric aquarium today for herpetogaster if you touch it it goes kush, kush, doki doki so make sure not to touch it as always have a nice day and please consider subscribing to me on patreon.com this has been cm kozaman now i'm gonna finish my coffee and properly wake up Okay, have a nice day everyone. Bye.